everybody! Welcome back to Shelby on Safari. We will be going into the world of stick insects today. While there's about 3,000 different species of these guys, we will be going over the three that James and I have in our collection, including getting to see some babies. I'm so excited these little nymphs are so cute and I got some great footage with the macro lens, so be sure to watch the whole video. And if you're keen to learn more about animals, nature, and animals in pop culture, be sure to hit that subscribe button and dash that little bell while you're at it so you can be the first to know of all the upcoming content. So let's get started and meet my first little friend here. Hello, you're so cute. friend Naomi. She is a giant spiny stick insect. Try saying that five times fast. Also known as a New Guinea stick insect. So spoilers as to where she's found in the wild. That's right, New Guinea. She's just so beautiful. Aren't you? Yes. So there's one thing that all three of the species that you'll meet today have in common, and that is that they are sexually dimorphic. And she's there we go <laughs> so that means that the males and females look different in particular the female stick insects are usually a bit bigger than the males and Naomi here is no exception she is quite a bit bigger than her buddy Jack she can get up to 15 centimeters in length but with the New Guinea stick insects the males have something rather cool while they may not be bigger than the females they have a big spike on their back legs that they use to wrap around if they are threatened or feel scared or even captured by a predator. It can also trap your fingers, so do be careful. Males can also secrete a foul smelling odor if they feel threatened. But you wouldn't do that, would you, Naomi? No, you're far too kind. Yes. <laughs> and yes, I do talk to my stick insects perfectly normal, right? During the day they hide, but then at night they come out to eat. And what exactly do they eat? Well, Naomi here loves to eat bramble, and a lot of it too. Another similarity between our three species of stick insect is that they all need it quite humid. Therefore, spraying each of their enclosures is really important because we want to mimic their natural habitat. Therefore, spraying at least every other day is really important because this is their water source. And you get thirsty too. We find that the New Guinea stick insects are super thirsty as well. So you get lots of water, don't you? And with all three species, we also have a little jar in each of their enclosures. This is filled up with water and we use it to put the bramble branches in so that way the bramble branches last longer. When you miss their enclosure, be sure to check out how much bramble they've eaten. You may need to top it up. While we don't have any New Guinea stick insect babies at the moment, their nymphs do look quite different than what you see here. When Naomi was younger, she was almost green in color, but now she's more of a dark, shiny brown. Meet the Zompro stick insect. They are originally from Thailand, and we love having them in our collection. Zompros are sexually dimorphic. This means that there's a difference between males and females. In this case, the females are larger than the males. These guys can eat a variety of different leaves. If you do try to mix things up a bit, make sure you do so gradually, as to not disturb their gut bacteria. The Zompro stick insect is parthenogenic. This is a fancy word meaning that the females have a very interesting way to produce offspring. They don't actually need a male. The eggs that she produces are unfertilized. However, they still develop properly and can grow into adult stick insects. And the crazy thing is, stick insects are not the only ones that can produce asexually. Some plants, snakes, and even the whiptail lizard can reproduce via parthenogenesis. Be sure to check out the links in the description below for more information. It's important to try to replicate their natural habitat. Therefore, we miss their enclosure every day in the summertime just to help keep the air humidity levels up and also give them something to drink. During the winter, we do it every other day. Now that you've seen the adults, 
Let's go find a baby Zompro stick insect. I love these little guys. They're so cute. Now to the third species of stick insect that we keep. Can you find the Indian stick insect in their enclosure? You might see one next to the subscribe button on the screen. As their names suggest, they are found in the tropical forest of southern India. The Indian stick insect is also parthenogenic. In fact, we probably have mostly females in this enclosure. That's because it's quite rare to have a male in captivity. As you can see, these guys destroyed the bramble that I put in only the other day. That's why it's important to check in on your stick insects, top up their humidity, and make sure that they have enough food. Even though most species of stick insect are relatively easy to keep, they still deserve the attention that you would give any other pet. Speaking of attention, look at all of our new friends. We certainly have a lot of mouths to feed. The Indian stick insects are also sexually dimorphic. The females get up to about 8 centimeters in length. I just love the look of these guys. They are incredible and have really mastered the art of camouflage. They also know how to play dead, just like some of your pet dogs at home. Let's now meet one of the new additions. Look at the little baby nymph. They're so cute. Thank you so much for joining me on this introduction into the amazing world of stick insects. If you learned something new, give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, be sure to click to subscribe.